Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Boston, Massachusetts for The Cube at HP Big Data 2015, hashtag HP Big Data 2015, or go to crowdchat.net slash HP Big Data 2015. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Chris C.B. Bone, Bone, Senior Database Engineer at SD. Welcome back to The Cube. Thank you very much. Um, so, SD, hot in the news, beating earnings, growing. Last, last time we talked, you gave an awesome talk about the large scale. We're back. Large right. scale is back and hot. It's gotten even bigger. It's gotten even larger. <laughs> but great keynote speech by Stonebreaker, our conversation with Colin. He talked about a couple things, variety of data. Yeah. Okay, we, I focused in on that. Yeah, volume, velocity, that's cool, it's happening, bigger, faster. Right. But the variety piece is interesting. I want to get your take on where all this fits in. How do people manage the data analytics with the large scale build out of cloud or on-prem? You know, it's a tough problem. There's a lot of, at Etsy we've got a lot of different uh, data sources and data repositories. We've got Hadoop, we've got Vertica, uh, and uh, you know, we're trying to unify them all into, into one manageable piece, but it's hard to do that. You know, because they're all sort of proprietary and they all grew up organically on their own. And uh, our job to make it more manageable is to bring them together. What's the engineering conversation? So all the all the guys are sitting around, kind of really looking at this from multiple perspectives. How do you guys frame it? I mean, a lot of stuff's going on. You have you know, different databases all over the place. You mentioned different platforms and technologies. I mean, unification, okay, that's a high level goal, guiding principle. How, how do you frame it? How do you start engineering engineering that, I mean, what do you take tackle first? What's yeah, the approach? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, if you were to be building a city. You've got all these different parts of the city, and uh, how do you connect them all? It's through the transportation layer. So what we're doing right now is we, we're, we're gone deep into Kafka. We're using that as our messaging bus, and uh, we used to like replicate uh, data from our, uh, our production databases into Vertica, with sort of our own proprietary process. We hook up directly to uh, MySQL uh, databases, read the bin logs, do an ETL process into Vertica. Well now we're, we're pumping all that data into uh, Kafka and then our replication is basically being a consumer of those, uh, those data messages that are coming along and that's, you can see Vertica has done the same thing because they just announced today that they've got this uh, Kafka streaming capability now. Excavator, where, they call it, yeah. Yeah, well that, that's their next um, right. uh, version of Vertica, and part of that is this Kafka streaming thing. So they're thinking along the same terms. Hey, let's get uh, a common uh, bus for, for data, and then everybody can be a consumer of that. And so that's that's where we're headed. Well, yeah, like it seems tap like into the Tap into the main data stream. Yeah, exactly. Well, but it seems like the data pi pipeline was very disparate. All these different pieces, streaming, right. you know, MPP databases, et cetera. So you're saying there's this clear trend to start to bring them together. Now the, the cloud guys are trying to do that with integrated data management, but you don't get the functionality, right? Right. So, so uh, what's more important to you, that functionality or the simplicity? Well, they're both important, <laughs> but you know, simplicity in, in the end is going to, I think, uh, win the day because it's got to be manageable. Mm. If it's not manageable, then then uh, it doesn't matter how functional As it is. As services, ultimately, right. is really where you're headed, right? Right, but we used to use, uh, for example, we still do currently, uh, Vertica as a conduit of data into Hadoop, which is kind of uh, uh, a backwards way of it's that is usually done. You know, usually you, you have yeah, your data yeah. in Hadoop and you have the- Filter Vertica. it and then send it into- Exactly, <laughs> but uh, since we're, uh, we were getting our production data into Vertica, we found it easier then to just connect it to Hadoop and bring the data over that way. But since all this data is now going to be flowing through the Kafka pipeline, all these different databases can now subscribe to that, to that data and it makes it much easier. We only have to manage the Kafka part of things now and then just, uh, you know, everybody gets to consume it on their own. So, so do you have like sort of traditional RDBMS that you're offloading, you know, ETL offloading into Vertica, or is Vertica your sort of main EDW? Well, basically, we've got our production databases, which are uh, horizontally sharded MySQL. We okay. also have some Postgres databases that are sort of legacy, and has mostly our, uh, a lot of tall tables for billing information. Mm -hmm. And we have our own proprietary tools, we call them Schlep, 
that brings the data from. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kids and soccer and cross and stuff and everything around. Okay, but well, so we bring that we brought that data. Uh, in, we bring that data into Vertica with our own Schlepp process, right? But now we're saying, okay, instead of having all these different. Uh, ETL processes, let's try to just whittle it down, let's get one unified pipeline of data, Kafka, and then we can use these robust consumer uh, products to, to bring the data in. And so we're going to make use of the, the Vertica Kafka streaming connector. It's going to make our life a lot easier. See, we got to ask the question, we are, one of the things Dave and I always riff on is kind of like the unknown, and this is a database meets real-time problem. So, you know, good data stores, you got the indexes, but now all this unstructured data, whatever you want to call it, data exhaust, junk drawer, whatever. To make something asynchronous in real time, you need data structures, you need lists, you need some coolness. You got, you got things like Redis out there, and you know, Amazon's right. got Beanstalk, and you got Elasticsearch everywhere, so you can imagine the complexity involved. How do you get the databases to scale so fast when you got to deal with a lot of real time streaming and then and the database piece? How does that all click together? Yeah, you know, it takes a unified effort between the uh, data analysts, the people who are running the databases, and the sysops guys who are building the, the underlying uh, hardware to make it all good. You know, we've been, um, we're looking at speeding up our, our, our databases by going to SSDs more. They've become, yeah. they've come down in price enough and they're getting reliable enough that, uh, and they're super fast, that's going to make things a lot better there. The mean time between failure seems to be better than spinning rust, so, uh, are you guys looking at this challenge, or I mean, it's something that we're kind of just seeing some data on, which is how to take the benefit of Elastic Cloud, mm -hmm. bring that into some sort of like listing-based streaming, whether well, it's you know, Twitter we feeds. We don't and make use of any uh, external clouds at all. We just have too much data. Yeah. Data, and the problem is yeah. not that they're a bad thing. It's that uh, it's hard to get and and to the data into them. It has in gravity a time, <laughs> in, 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 a in a timely way. Now, years ago, we, uh, and I'm going, years ago means like two, three years ago at most, <laughs> yeah, right? Dog years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, so we used to uh, spin up some uh, Hadoop uh, things in, in AWS, but uh, it turned out to cost a lot of money, you know? Because you're uh, moving stuff back and forth, and the bandwidth and forth, costs the storage, too, kills you. Spinning it up and down, yeah. and... and uh, Our storage bills on Amazon can go up and up and up. Oh, we, we were spending a lot of money every month, and we ran, crunched the numbers, and said, well, let's just build our own Hadoop cluster. It's actually going to cost us less, because it'll, it'll be uh, co-resonant with, with the sources of the data, and so that, you a lot of machines laying around too. It's off the shelf machines. You can throw yeah. it on great, you know, commodity gear. Yeah, we, we we now have a huge Hadoop cluster. We've got a team dedicated to maintaining that, and that's worked out well for us. So it really depends on the nature of the company. I think your smaller uh, startups going into the cloud is is awesome for them. But once yeah. you get past a certain scale. You know, you got to look at it and say, are we better off doing this ourselves in yeah. our own facility? So Stonebreaker was talking about the hype and the bullshit, and he said BS, but yeah. he meant bullshit, but you know, in, in, in a lot of the big data stuff. So right. where's the reality out there? Share it to folks in your mind. What are the co what's the core reality right now in terms of problem space, solutions out there, and the bar that people just want to jump over. I mean, this, and people, it's not just to change the world. It's like, I mean, there's some basic stuff, right? What's right. the reality? Well, Stonebreaker brought, Brought, brought out the, the heavy weaponry, yeah. uh, and, uh, and he let it fly. <laughs> it was so good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was good, but he had a few misfires in there, I think. Okay. And it, it, you know, he's saying, oh, it's it's all hype, and, uh, and uh, the big thing I see for everybody out there is you've bought into all this hype. Well, okay, anytime you have some product out there that's actually doing something useful, there's going to be some marketing hype around it. That's just the world we live in, yeah, okay? Yeah. Uh, what did he misfire on? Over, over playing his hand on the hype, or was he technically wrong? Was he pumping? Well, tamer? he implied he implied that there wasn't really real hardcore value being created. That as a practitioner, right. that must have really kind of well, been off-putting. He kind of shot down <laughs> everything. He basically <laughs> said, "Hadoop, why are you even using it? The people who invented it, uh, Google, are abandoned it like ten years ago or whatever." The truth is, he did misfire on that. I didn't want to call yeah. him out on that, but uh, you know, <laughs> case in point, Kubernetes is open source uh -huh. because MapReduce was co-authored by Cloudera. Right, and that that internal conversation at Google was very much like we don't want to have the same thing happen to MapReduce, to Kubernetes. So that's kind of the problem is that you've Stonebreaker's got Stonebreaker's comments right there. Well, I think so, you know, and I, and and he, the good professor makes a lot of good points. But we get, get back on the cube. See, Stonebreaker, you got to get back on, on the cube. Come on. <laughs> so uh, I think the the problem here is that there's there's two forks really of of uh, uh, data analytics. One is very batch oriented. That comes out of the whole Hadoop thing, MapReduce. 
But the truth is that uh, a lot of analysts are more ad hoc in nature, you know, and uh, a lot of them aren't the best at writing map reduced jobs, but they can write SQL with the best of them, right? And so that's where, you know, we have Vertica for people who, uh, for the analysts who, who uh, are ad hoc oriented, you know, and then we've got uh, the map reduced jobs in our big Hadoop cluster. For, for those batch jobs. So I was going to ask you, are you serving data scientists or are you serving business analysts and you're saying both? We, we, because we have both. So we've got data analysts and we've got data scientists. We've got some really good ones. Uh, but uh, they're, they're working on different things. You know, the, the data scientists are more on predictive analytics, whereas the analysts, you know, they're looking, they're, they're crunching raw numbers really. We, we, we went public earlier this year and uh, you know, being able to crunch big, you know, big data uh, for the analysts, doing that in Vertica was really great because they could get the answers they needed quickly. Congratulations, by the way, on the IPO. Thank you very much. How's that changed the culture besides minting a few new millionaires? The reporting piece of it, <laughs> no change of you know, uh, more tight lip. You're and here and laying it out. A few more edicts. Yeah. <laughs> See, last time I didn't wear a coat. Now I got to wear the coat. <laughs> right? See, it, changes, it does change the culture a little bit in, yeah. in, in this way, in that uh, you know we have to have more data security now. Uh, so we've been implementing across our, our whole data um, systems security yeah. because not everybody can look at everything. Uh, so that's, that's part of the problem. I would advise companies to start thinking of that earlier on because uh, you know, when you have to go back, there's some technical debt you got to pay off for not doing it earlier. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah you, can, you can really get jammed on that. Yeah. So let me ask you about the impact of mobile to your job. Yeah. Okay, obviously you guys have been there for mobile first. You guys have a good presence. For the folks out there that know mobile's here and they are got their toe in the water or they're fully immersed, might be in the double down which's working or let's re-architect, share your point of view on how mobile has truly impacted the, the down the stack and, and, and things that you guys have done that you've learned. Right. Spark tissue you could share. Well, I mean, stories. three, four years ago, mobile was like nothing uh, in terms of part of our uh, uh, sales and so forth. Now it's 60%. So it's outstripped you know, traditional desktop systems. Yeah. That's the way the world is working, and that's increasing. You're going, to get, you're going to see more and more of it, but there's a problem with the form factor of mobile, you know. And so our challenge as a as a marketplace is making it accessible. I think we're doing a really good good job at that. But we're also analyzing a lot of this stuff, so we get a lot of information in our clickstream data about, you know, how is mobile being used, uh, and. Yeah. That kind of brings us to uh, real-time analytics because we run a lot of A-B tests. Real-time analytics, I think, is going to be a bigger and bigger player as we go forward. We're looking at a product that's right new on the scene called Pipeline DB. It's a, a fork of um, Postgres, and it allows you to pump a, a stream of data into your database, create a view on top of that that you can then join to your regular uh, table. So if you think of the the stream of data coming yeah. in, your clickstream data as your as your uh, facts, and your stored tables as your uh, dimensions. What's nice for us is we can um, analyze that data coming along, saying, "Oh, this person's on mobile. Oh, yeah. where are they from?" We'll join to the our user details table. Say, "Oh, okay, they're in this part of the country," and so we can start to really analyze and dig deep on the on the trends and how people from different regions, both in the U.S. and internationally, are using streamline mobile. the user experience on the fly, basically. That's what we have to do, yeah, and yeah. and and so we're tightening the loop on getting answers. So that's why I say real-time analytics is going to be a big deal, because you know we've we've had this this loop where we get data, we have to bring it into Vertica, that's kind of a tedious loop that takes some time. We want quicker answers, so we're looking at all the different uh, streaming analytic solutions, real-time analytics, uh, and they're all starting to emerge right now into the yeah. marketplace, but there's no winner, it's, there's high it's flux. Super early. Super early. And this is the fun part, I think you just hit the nail on the head we were talking earlier about why it's so much fun to be in this business because there's innovation going on right in front of everybody. Absolutely. Well, so. You heard Robert Youngjohns talk about sort of tongue in cheek about this Hadoop project spinning up, what's your strategy, and it's like, well, we got these Hadoop clusters running around. As, in dog years, you know, two years, as the market's evolved, how is the decision making process around which projects to fund uh, and which vendors to use, how has that changed? I would imagine it used to be pretty decentralized and pretty sort of down in the weeds, is it escalating? Is it becoming much more strategic? It's, it's definitely escalated, and I'll tell the story about uh, big data at Etsy. Uh, we had, a, back in the dog, a couple dog <laughs> years ago or whatever, we had a, a Postgres a BI machine, and uh, 
Postgres has, Postgres has great database, but it's a relational database, and it's really excellent at looking up single records, but when you're trying to do aggregation, it starts to fall down, as they all do, okay? So then uh, we started looking around, oh, what are we going to do to replace this? We need to get fast results for aggregation. So we settled on Vertica, and we've been a Vertica customer now for about three years, and that really has been great, but we, we brought it in just for certain analysts to use, and all of a sudden it exploded throughout the company. It's kind of the linchpin of our whole data uh, stack at this point because it's so accessible because of the good SQL language that it has, right? People know SQL. Uh, and so now it's used by analysts, data scientists, uh, people running A-B tests, we run certain types of dashboards off of it. Uh, so when things start to grow like that, it gains in importance. Like I wanted to um, upgrade Vertica to the latest version uh, for about two months now, and uh, the head of our analytics business analytics team says, "Don't you dare, <laughs> because you know we're crunching Q2 numbers and so forth, and uh, you know we can't afford to have this thing go down for any amount of time." So that shows you how important it has become. And when things become important, then you know the decision process gets a little harder. The usability drives everything, right? It's like you know, it, so, SQL is comfortable, it's accepted, accelerates adoption. Right, I mean, if, if, if you have a, a really fast car, but uh, and it's a gear shift car with a clutch, but no one knows how to drive that, then it's just going to sit in the garage, you know? Yeah. So it's got to be powerful and usable. So I, I want to ask you a question to riff on something with us. Dave and I always talk about like some stuff that we're kind of getting our arms around, and one of the things is this whole omni-channel thing, and, and one of the things that we were talking about on theCUBE a couple, couple events ago was, Forget A-B testing, there's other letters in the alphabet. This, you know, and right. to goof on the Google thing that's news, <laughs> alphabet, is, you know, is, is, it's been kicked around. You can do a lot of different use cases. So it's not just A-B testing, which is traditional. Right. You're limited by a lot of data, right? You, you can't store all the other scenarios. Yeah. So take us through the mindset of, soon there will be multitude of tests, A, B, D, all the way to Z, plenty of letters in the alphabet. Yeah, I think I mean, that. How, do you, mean, how would you attack that problem? How well, the way the way we currently it? do it is we you know put out an A/B test to uh, you know a very small segment of our user base out there, and we see how things things go with that. Now we're a rapid deployment uh, shop. You know, we we push code about thirty times a day out to our web servers. That allows us to do A/B testing really well because we can push stuff out and then we can pull it back quickly. There's probably other companies out there that don't have that kind of flexibility in their deployment um, routines. So it's important if you're going to do A/B testing. That is, that is pure DevOps right there. It is. Yeah. Well, we we uh, open sourced a tool called Deployinator that's used by a lot of companies now. Deployinator. Deployinator, yeah. and because it's a problem when you have, uh, you know, and then uh, the ops guys call it Terminator. They have their own <laughs> Counter Strike tool. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have a when you have this plethora of servers, you know, we've got hundreds yeah. of servers that are yeah. serving, you know, web requests, and you've got to get the code out to that. You have to have a reliable way of doing that so mm -hmm. that you know it's all good. And we have a this Deployinator process goes through. You know, putting it out to some test servers first, making sure it all runs, it goes through all its unit tests, and then it pushes it finally out to production at the end of that whole process. It's very reliable, and we're able to roll back stuff easily. So, you have to have that if you're going to do uh, a lot of A-B testing or yeah. all full alphabet testing. So, we're moving in that direction because we can pull things back yeah, if yeah. need be. But you also have the, to do the analytics on it, you better have a system that can handle that kind of flow of data. Yeah, yeah. And so all that A-B testing stuff, it all goes into Kafka too, and that's coming into Vertica so that we can, can and you get out, it. You look at the numbers, you look at the, the results. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the thing that we also talk about is that, you know, this optimization for large scale, high performance, web service for instance, you can boat load them up, just juice them up, but then it might be rigid from a flexibility standpoint. Right. When you're pushing code 30 times a day, you got to have the high performance web servers and all the, the tech underneath, software, but you need flexibility. How do you right. balance that? You know, that, that starts to is it flow. art and science? The kind well, of it, it, it is art and science together, you know, uh, and it flows up to higher levels. You know, we have a really good operations uh, team at Etsy, and uh, they, uh, we work closely, I'm, I'm in um, data engineering is my group, and uh, so, but we work closely with them because, you know, uh, hardware is changing all the time, software is changing all the time, uh, and they have, they have to work in concert. So Colin Mahoney in his keynote sort of went back to the early days of, of, of ERP, you know, systems of record, and a lot of highly customized examples, and then he sort of became packaged apps. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was going to say, we're going to see a similar track with analytics, where everything's you know, highly customized and it's going to be more packaged. And 
he really didn't go there. He said, it's going to be different. It's going to be more composite. It's got to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in your organization? You, is there a demand, a push for more packaged apps? Analytics, you know, buried, you know, bundled into the apps, or is it really this sort of scenario of composite, composable pieces? Yeah, I think, uh, again, it's, it really depends on the stage of, of the company. You know, I think if you're small, packaged apps are really good because it gets you along quicker than if you've got to roll your own. But when you start to get bigger, like Etsy is now, sometimes you, you need the flexibility of being able to roll your own stuff. So you, basically what we do is we get the building blocks, like Vertica, Hadoop, uh, and so forth, Kafka, and then we, uh, we have the, the, the know-how and the expertise to uh, quickly write things uh, to, uh, to work. And that gives you differentiation. Yeah, well. Presumably, and, right, and competitive yeah, we, advantage. We know best what's going to work for us, so uh, you know, there's some package things that, that, we, that we use. Uh, we use Looker, for example, to help our analysts get uh, you know, uh, insight into our data. Tools like that are really useful. Uh, but there's some things that we have to roll our own, especially when you're you're down beneath the surface and, and at an ops level. And you don't necessarily see that change. I mean, help me square that with the earlier statements about simplicity ultimately is going to win. Are we just years away from that? Simplicity, having that type of functionality, or will there sort right. of always be a Well, dissonance? when we talk about simplicity, it's about the end user within our organization, you know, the analysts and the data scientists. Mm. They want it to be simple. Okay, and predictable. They want to making it simple is not simple. <laughs> is that's true, saying, but that's right? why under the yeah. hood there, yeah. you know, <laughs> data engineering and and uh, and ops, we're all working together. There may be some layers of complexity under there, but uh, the whole point is we'll have a complex under here where we understand it, but it's got to be simple when it when it's facing the user. But I think where th where some things are going also is you you heard about uh, uh, SQL on Hadoop. That's been a problem now for a number of dog years. Uh, and we're excited about what Vertica is doing in there because we have a lot of data in Hadoop that uh, we're not bringing over into into Vertica at this time, and maybe that'll work for us to make that accessible. Um, you said it's know. been a problem because it hasn't been available. I mean, or, or well, there's just it's it's like okay, this it's this is nice data in Hadoop, but it's too much hassle right now to get it over into into Vertica. So we'll just let it sit there, and we can do some map reduce jobs. But so. The, the, the SQL on Hadoop will make that, it's going to democratize the, that data. You know, it'll, it'll let people run queries on, uh, directly on Hadoop where they hadn't been able to do that So before. the conventional wisdom is Cloudera's Impala sort of you know, changed the world. I mean, Hadap was first, but Hadap failed, but, but right. Impala sort of changed that, and then, of course, Vertica has always been there. Right, but well, Hadap failed because it had, uh, it had some onerous requirements, basically hanging a uh, solar and Postgres server off of every uh, node in your, you're not that efficient, right. right? So, CB, I got to ask your final question. I got the hook here, but I'm getting some comments uh, back channel to me from folks in the industry. Are you bullish or bearish on Kafka, and why? Uh, we are bullish. Highly. I mean, yeah. we're going. <laughs> I think we're, we're kind of going all in on it. <laughs> but why? Because it's the winner in all this uh, messaging stuff. There was there, there's been a number of uh, Apache sponsored messaging brokers and, and, and systems. Uh, over the years, and uh, a lot of them have failed. And uh, you, you talk about technical debt, I'm glad that we waited and d didn't go all in on some of these things earlier because you can l be left holding the bag and that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Kafka's out there, it's getting traction, it's, it's, it's got what we think now is critical mass, it's going to be around. And another really important thing is that when you're adopting technology, you want to make sure that, it's, that it does have critical mass because there's people out there who know it. You know, you don't want to buy some XYZ solution or adopt some XYZ solution and you're the only person and then any staffing you have to do, you've got to train everybody. It's, be it's better, I mean, this is why PHP's kind of won the, the web uh, interface game is that there's so many people who understand it and can program it competently that uh, it wins out in the end for that. Okay, CB, thanks for sharing that. I got that last question in. The folks who have, uh, in, the, in the press are going to thank me for that, so thanks for the comments. We're bullish on it as well. This is theCUBE, bringing you the data, sharing the signal with you, and we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>